In the previous lesson, you learned about iteration using the while loop. The while loop is called a condition controlled loop because the exit condition doesn't have to involve numbers. In this video, I'm going to show you a count controlled loop, namely the for loop. When you're writing applications, you'll probably find that you can use either a while loop or a for loop. Sometimes it's just a matter of preference. I've already created a Windows application here and I've placed a button on the form and I have a text box which I've called TXT Your Name. I'm going to use this to collect some input. And there is a for loop. This is the code which will execute over and over again. I've essentially declared a variable within these brackets. This is going to be my loop counter. This is my exit condition. The loop will continue while i is less than 5. And here I'm specifying that I want to increment i, in other words add 1 to i, every time I pass through the loop. Let's give it a go. I could have done exactly the same thing using a while loop, but arguably the syntax is more compact. I could have done this as well. So I'm counting even numbers up to 10. And I could have done this. This time I'm counting down from 10, and you can see I'm decrementing the value of i with each pass of the loop. A for loop is called a count controlled loop because it does depend on counting. As I said, it's a matter of preference whether you do this using a for loop or a while loop. Depending on the circumstances and the rest of your code, you might find that the while loop is more flexible. Now let's try doing something useful. I'll comment out this code, and I'm going to parse a text string. I'm going to display a string of text one letter at a time. So first I'm collecting the input from the text box on the form. I'm also declaring a variable called one letter, which is going to store one letter of the string at a time. And this is my for loop, which is counting up to five. Inside the loop, I'm using the substring method. The substring method does exactly what it says. It allows you to extract part of a string. You need to tell it two things. You need to say where the substring begins, the start index, and you need to specify the length of the substring. I'm using the value of i as the start index. So first time through the loop, i will have a value of 0. So my substring will begin at position 0 of the string your name. And I'm specifying a length of 1, so it's only going to extract one character. Next time through the loop, i will have a value of 1, and next time a value of 2, and so on. Let's see what happens. It's important to realise that the substring method assumes that the first character of a string is at position 0. If the string was longer than 5 characters, I'm only outputting the first 5. But I could do this.
Now there's one final point I'd like to make, and it's about the scope of the variable i. Let's try to output the value of i outside of the loop. Well, I'm getting a syntax error, so I'm not even going to be able to run this code. The name i does not exist in the current context. The variable i was declared here, within the for loop, and therefore it can only be used within the for loop. We say that it has block level scope. I could have done this. So my for loop can still make use of this variable, which now has what we call procedure level scope. It can be seen by the whole procedure. Notice the semicolon here to indicate that something might have gone before it. It still works. Now I recommend you spend some time familiarising yourself with this syntax. Why not try writing a for loop to count up or down from 10, like I did? Write some code to display all of the letters in a string, like this. You could then try searching a string to see if it contains a particular letter. Pause the video to give this a go, and I'll show you a solution in a moment. And here's my solution to searching a string for a particular substring, or in this case, a particular letter. Here's my for loop, which is scanning the string one letter at a time. I'm using the substring function to do this. As I assign each letter to this variable, I'm testing to see if it's the letter Z. Z is what I'm looking for. If I find a Z, I set the value of this Boolean variable to true. I declare the Boolean variable called foundit up here. Once I've found the letter Z, I then break out of the for loop. I'm using the break command. There's no need to keep searching. Once I'm out of the loop, I'm testing the value of foundit. If found it equals true, it means I've found the letter Z, so I display an appropriate message. If not, I display a different message. Here it is in action. I could do with making the text box a bit wider, but it'll still work. Found Z. If there is no Z, I get an appropriate message. If I want to report the character position of Z, then I can't declare the variable i here. I'll need to do this instead. 